I'm Richard Seewald, and uh, I'm a professor here at the University of Western Ontario and co-director of the Child Amplification Lab here in the National Center for, for Audiology. In this lab, our work is focused primarily on the selection and fitting of amplification in infants and young children. Well, this is a technology uh, that I think uh, we've been waiting for for, uh, uh, for a long time. The sound recover uh, uh, or nonlinear frequency compression technology attempts to take the full range of incoming sound and to bring that into the auditory area of the child with hearing loss much like uh, wide dynamic range compression, which is a technology that was developed during the 90s, allows us to take a wider range of intensities and to bring that into the residual dynamic range of hearing that the, the, the child has. We need to have very accurate definition of the hearing uh, capacity of the child. And I think we have the technology now to be able to accurately define uh, what the child's uh, hearing capacity is. And now we can uh, take these new technologies and shape them so that we can bring more information uh, to the child uh, through uh, technologies such as sound recover. We think of children really as sponges in the early years and they're what, what the brain is needing is the input. And, and so the, the task of uh, hearing aid design and hearing aid fitting procedures is to figure out the best ways of getting that input to the brain. I think of um, listening as, you know, about 20% ear work and about 80% brain work. So what we're really trying to do is get as much information to the brain so that it can develop and then language and communication systems uh, can uh, develop uh, from that point for, for a child. At this point, there's no indication that it's limited to any particular configuration or degree of hearing loss. Um, there's a lot more work that we'll need to do along the lines of understanding the, the best candidates and how the fitting should proceed. Uh, but I think, uh, going back to what I said earlier, hearing aids have a limited bandwidth capability. And so what we're trying to do, whether it be for a child with a mild hearing loss or a moderate hearing loss or a profound hearing loss, is to bring those sounds into audibility uh, for the child. At this point, I have no concern about fitting a technology such as this on, a, on an infant um, because we know that with this technology, we're providing more sound uh, in the early going, and this is what, exactly what we're trying uh, to accomplish in hearing aid fitting. When I you know, do a comparison of 40 years ago uh, to today, it's like I think the sky's the limit for what we can now accomplish with children who have, who have hearing loss. And it's in a very exciting time and it's, uh, it's wonderful to, uh, to be able to uh, improve the quality of a child's life in a, such a very powerful way as we can do today.